welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker, and uh, I'd like to read to you first of all from Volume Two uh, of my book, which I says I spend a whole chapter talking about Coach Dean Smith and uh, his impact on the type of play that uh, I particularly like uh, and favor, and have just learned that works very well over the years. Uh, we have a number of quotes in here from Coach uh, Smith. This is the one I think that pertains to uh, what we're going to talk about today. A prevalent weakness of most players at any skill level, including professional, is that is their limited ability to move without the ball. The passing game dictates that a player must move without the ball. The passing game is the name that Coach Smith used for his freelance game. Uh, actually, he called it the freelance passing game. Uh, that, that quotation says a lot, and I would have to agree with him that at all levels, including the NBA, very few players know how to move without the ball. And that's, a, that's really uh, uh, a weakness and should be uh, taught early in their career, even, even in youth basketball, uh, so that they grow uh, with it rather than uh, having to learn it at a higher level. They should know it. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about uh, that aspect of basketball. Actually, it's the start of a two-part series. This is cutting. We talk about cutting, which is a major part of moving without the ball. We're going to divide it into two areas. One, which is this first part, is cutting off of a screen. Uh, this is, of course, all without the ball. And part two will be cutting without a, a screen because it becomes, um, you have to do both things and they're a little bit different but they have an awful lot of sameness uh, to them uh, also. And uh, before I get started though I would like to mention that in uh, early in uh, our beginning I did a three-part series on improvisation uh, on October 1st, October 3rd, and October 5th of 2013. If you need to see more film work, if you need to see more uh, drills, uh, that would be the place to go. However, in Volume 3 of the book, uh, also, we go through every drill uh, that we use. Uh, and so uh, you can then see film work, and, and I thought about having film work, but uh, it's, we've already done it, so uh, it seemed like uh, it wasn't necessary. But the question is, for coaches, how do you work with players to get them to move without the ball and, and with purpose and uh, with accuracy and and uh, with execution. Uh, that's what we will discuss uh, today uh, because um, it, it, there is a way and if you, but you have to do it consistently and you have to do it for a long time. One, one coach asked me, how long does it take you to be excellent at uh, cutting off a screen? And I told him years. Uh, because it does. But don't think that you aren't coaching a player or players that aren't going to be playing years from now. What if one of your players gets a chance to go to a, a Division I, II, or three college, play four years, and he goes there and doesn't know how to move without the ball? Uh, or even, and I've seen this many times, how about if he makes the NBA? He walks into training camp and can't play without the ball. 
Uh, a lot of NBA players can, of course. Uh, but those that can uh, have a great advantage. So give your player that advantage. Don't let at any point in his professional or collegiate career let that stand in his way. That's the message I want to give to you. Very important to work with these players correctly. Uh, I'm, just before I get started, with the, I'm going to go on the board and show some things, but I think there's one thing you have to accept when you teach and coach uh, cutting and moving without the ball. Uh, you have to teach and coach freedom. You can't direct everything a player does. That becomes like robotical, uh, very ineffective. Playing without the ball will be most effective when the players have the freedom to do what they feel is best at the time. And I have a saying I tell every team I coach, every player I coach, you can't be wrong. Do not worry about being wrong. Do what you feel like doing. Do what you think you want to do. You won't be wrong. Uh, and let them have that freedom. Let them know that they can do things that they feel is right to do at the right time. The game of basketball is too fast. You don't have time to have a committee meeting. You don't have time to figure everything out. You must play instinctively. Your job, coach, is to help them become instinctive. And you can start today. Start now with every player on your team. And you'll not only have better results for your team, but you have better results for players moving into a higher skill level, as Coach Smith uh, mentioned. Now, I think the next step that I want to take in this is to take you to the board and we'll discuss some of the things that we've uh, already talked about there. It's a little easier to see uh, on the board. So let's move to the board. What I've put up here is a is a really the first uh, drill that we use to teach uh, uh, cutting off of a screen. And uh, it's called the screen away drill. It's in the book. Uh, and uh, it's also in those uh, videos that I talked to you about. Uh, and, but you know, it's not actually a realistic uh, game situation here, mainly because of where the coach does his passing uh, over here. Instead of if he were here, it would be more realistic. But we want to open things so players uh, can see very well. In our offense and in, I hope, in your offense, that you not only screen, but you move off of the screen. Uh, this is very important. It keeps the motion going very well. Uh, and you give your uh, offensive players two things, two ways to score. A coach can pass to this guy coming off the top for a shot, or he can pass to the roll man going towards uh, the basket. Uh, and uh, it, this is the very most regular thing of the of uh, cutting, uh, and uh, with the with the uh, use of the screen. And one point I'd like to make <clears throat> is that we do not teach a real headhunter screen. Uh, we're more uh, interested in moving than trying to block somebody. Football players block people. Uh, I don't think uh, we need to block people. We can, if we set good screens, the cutter is the key uh, to the screening situation, not the screener. I hear coaches get on people for not screening right. The cutter makes that screen work, not the screener. If he's doing anything, he's going to screen the player. 
Uh, this guy's got to put them in the position to be uh, screened. Uh, so uh, we, we use more of a movement type screen. It almost uh, hit and miss, you know, hit and run, I mean. Uh, but uh, we want that kind of uh, movement and spacing. Now, that's called the regular. That's the easiest one, the first one. The only really difficult thing on it is, is the roll. The second one is the back cut. The screen is set and uh, the man steps up if he wants to, he doesn't have to, and then back cuts to the, to the basket. The screener then pops and teach your screeners to pop straight out, okay? Uh, because when you get into other screening situations, that will become much more important. The third thing that we teach in this group uh, is off the screen, the, the cutter curls, what we call a curl. I guess everybody calls it a curl. Again, the screener pops. And the last movement that we want to work on or show in this particular video is what we call slipping the screen, which is a very, very good move uh, if you get it down. And here it is the screener who's going to get the ball. He goes into screen, and instead of actually going to the screen, he does what we call slip it. He makes the cut. This guy has to react by coming out to the top. He replaces uh, him at, uh, at the top. Now, all of this is very uh, rudimentary, uh, but there's some things that you need to uh, in, in, uh, include in working with them on this. If you can do these four things, by the way, uh, you, you, you can play right up to the NBA with those four things. Uh, you must become an expert uh, at them. Um, one, one thing I'm going to give you that I've said before, uh, but you have, to, um, you have to talk to your players about this. <clears throat> we go through and show what each, when is a good time to run the back cut. Well, if the guy is trying to fight over the top of the screen, when is a good time to run the curl? Well, uh, if they're using a technique called lock and trail, they trail the guy around. Very effective in this uh, up here, but not very effective if he curls it. In fact, he's going to get open for a lot of good shots. Uh, and here is when the players are almost switching or are switching on this. If you can slip that screen very easily uh, for an easy shot. Now, we talk to our players about that. We show them those particular reasons for running each one of these uh, cuts. But we make sure that they understand they are not to be looking for what the defensive player is doing. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I tell players, do not try to read the defense. Everybody says you got to read the defense. I disagree. I think it's too slow, too robotic. Feel the defense. And you say, how can you learn to do that? By experience. That's how you learn to do it. And as a coach, you give them a lot of experience. And they will start to feel that defensive player. And then they react instinctively to that feel. They don't even need to look. Now you may say, uh, well, as a coach, you got to tell them. You know what I found out early in my coaching career? I would call a guy out, you know, a timeout and say, listen, that guy on that screen is, uh, is f f going over the top, so back cut him. Well, he goes out there, and the very next time the guy isn't playing over the top. Uh, and so the back cut is worthless, or any other of these moves. You see, the defensive man doesn't always play the same on every play. It can be because of... 
uh, you know, he's thinking of something else, he's lazy or whatever, but he doesn't always do the same thing. Your player must, must feel it. Don't try to direct uh, that, uh, that kind of uh, movement. It has to be um, instinctive. Teach instincts. Give them a lot of experience so they're instinctive with that. And players can learn to feel the defense. Most players, as they reach a higher skill level, do that without even thinking about it. The coach may be saying, read the defense. They aren't. Uh, they don't know. They just know, get a feel that this is the right move, and they do it. And that's the way you want your players to, to uh, handle this. Now, players the players will will get kind of a favorite. Uh, you know, I remember when I was at, at uh, D uh, Dallas, Brad Davis played. He, he was a master at the back cut. Got a basket every once in a while. Uh, easy basket one or two times a game. No matter how they tr tried to stop it, he, could, he, had, he had the feel. He knew when the defensive player uh, wasn't right, and he'd back cut in for a, a layup. Uh, I coached a player that had been in the NBA when I was coaching in the CBA, and he told me that in the NBA very few players curl, but he said, you know, it made my career being able to, to curl. Uh, so they develop favorites. That can be good or bad. Sometimes they don't want to run anything but their favorite. They, they, and then the defense does start to play the play. So encourage them to do something that they feel natural about. Maybe it's this, the curl, maybe it's the back cut, uh, maybe it's slipping the screen, uh, but uh, have them modify and learn these others also because the defense uh, may, may chant, may uh, a change uh, on them. So uh, it now becomes up to your your position coach how much time you want to spend on things like this. Uh, you will find that these four things can be applied to almost any screening position on the ball. But let me warn you, this is not necessarily what position they will use. I mean, the guy might be down here, it might be a screen down, might be a cross screen, might be a back screen, uh, but the, 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 the cuts uh, remain basically this, the same. It's applying them at the right time uh, and applying them with timing and execution. It can only be done by regimented, strong uh, practice that you, that players get a chance to work on it day after day and through years of experience. Uh, but coach your players like they're going to be playing years from now. If they don't, that's okay. But, but if they are, you have given them a gift, a gift that they will never forget. It will help them make teams it will help them be successful, and it will help you as a coach make your team. Uh, so that's all I can tell you uh, from going on the board. A few weeks ago, I showed you some film of improvisation in a game between um, Miami and Indiana. The game started very physical, uh, and uh, both teams had trouble with that, but especially Indiana. Miami was out to physically take them out of their game, and they were doing that. And all of a sudden, one player made a cut, uh, not a part of their system at all, a part of their play, and a cut in for an easy basket and scored. And then a couple other players started doing that uh, for Indiana, and they scored. Pretty soon Miami picked up on, a, on the other end, though they didn't do as well with it. Uh, 
they still the game then changed from a pushing and shoving and physical, brutal type of game to a game of finesse. Uh, and it changed from a kind of a boring uh, watching uh, to something really fun to, to watch. You can't beat it regardless of what you think. Everything I've seen proven, has proven and Synergy uh, has a special uh, segment, I mean a special category for cuts. That is always the highest scoring area, not the screen at the ball, screen, screen without the ball and cutting, uh, I mean cutting without the ball. And uh, this is it's an important part of the game. So I hope you can pass this on to your players. Uh, very, very important in my opinion. I, I saw so many players come into the NBA, rarely talented players, that couldn't move without the ball. I'd never been taught, never been shown, never been worked with. Uh, don't let your players be in that position. So that's it for cutting off of a screen, part one. In part two, the next segment, uh, we will deal with cutting without a screen. Just cutting. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.